Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss Jarhead, starring Jake Gyllenhaal, Peter Sarsgaard, Chris Cooper, Dennis Haysbert, John Krasinski, Scott McDonald, and Lucas Black, directed by Sam Mendes. Now, let's see how much better this movie is than American Beauty, because I remember going to theaters for this, and I remember being kind of let down by it, if I remember correctly. Let's just get into this movie, and we'll see how let down I was. We get a narration from Anthony Swafford, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, about the rifle he had in the war as the year is 1989, and the drill instructor drills him like a motherfucker. As these drill instructors are at the military are nasty motherfuckers, and they, I like how realistic this movie takes the war, as this is a biopic, and I credit director Stan Mendes for taking this realism very seriously. For example, the soldiers brand the label Jarhead on the skin of the Jarheads until he passes out, or until Swafford passes out, which was interesting, but real life choice. He wakes up and learns it was a trick to fuck up the new recruits as he has the stomach flu, and there are things he can't show the audience, and while in the toilet, Swafford is approached by Staff Sergeant Sykes, played by Jamie Foxx, as he gets the opportunity to become a sniper at a camp while he's introduced to the camp as he's introduced to the as the guy playing who plays a cappella for the group of soldiers. And they train like crazy motherfuckers, and they do like the characters as Sykes, in my opinion, is the best character change is the best character of the movie. But one problem I have is it's not an action movie like the sequels look like they are at best. A stupid idiot decides to get killed while in the middle of an exercise, which is an idiotic move on the guy because he was too chicken shit to join the war in the first place as war is hell. And if you've seen any of the war movies, you'll know that and you'll know why. And this is a typical war movie you see every day. America goes to war with Iraq thanks to President George H.W. Bush, who is not in this movie but is brought up a couple of times. And I really like the training scenes in this movie as it makes me, the movie go by quickly. Swafford and another soldier, Chris Kruger, played by Lucas Black. Remember him from Tokyo Drift? Because I kind of do, unfortunately. But this was the year before, but let's move on. They sit with Alan Troy, played by Peter Sarsgaard, as Kruger acts inappropriate with the stewardess on the airplane. And as they arrive to Iraq, they get welcomed to the, by Lieutenant Colonel Kaczynski, played by Chris Cooper, briefly, as he tells them what will happen while they're in Iraq. As they get inside, and the dialogue is great to listen to as the soldiers talk like some badass motherfuckers, as Sykes comes in and makes the soldiers put on some gas masks, and they fail miserably, and just for that, they take a run, which made me laugh real hard. They watch a couple of scorpions fight for some, many, for some money, which always pains me to watch, and particularly on animals, but they were scorpions, what do you expect? Then we get Swaffer narrating about masturbation, and the narration scenes are absolutely unnecessary, in my opinion. Reporters interviews the soldiers about how happy and scared they are about the war, and they play a game of football with their NVC suits, while Swafford gets picked on during the game quite a bit, I'll say, until they strip and act all inappropriate in front of the reporters, and at night do some throwing some shit while in the rain for a pain, which was hilarious, sure, Swafford gets a letter from his girlfriend about her having a friend at work, and he's a good listener, as Swafford is led to believe she's cheating on him. As she, he calls her asks and asks how well does she know the guy she works with, and Swafford isn't happy about it, and he dreams of having sand in his mouth, and he wakes up as they're led to believe they're watching the deer hunter, but they instead see a soldier's wife humping their neighbor as she's filmed to, uh, to piss him off and to see who's fucking around now as Swafford wants to feel his own pain from his girlfriend cheating on him, which, was fuck which is a fucked up way to live your life. They have a Christmas party while F Fitch 
is on Swafford's watch and accidentally burning fireworks, and Swafford gets blamed for it and demoted by not only Sykes, but Major Lincoln, played by Dennis Haysbert. And I thought, what the fuck was he doing here? As the actors are doing a good job while partying the, the soldiers, like soldiers they are. Swafford is pissed at Fitch for ratting him out and tests him as he tells them it was an accident and tells him to repeat after him about the rifle and Swafford asks Fitch to shoot himself, which is a painfully acted scene as Troy threatens to shoot Swafford himself if he ever does shit like that again until some Iraqi citizens find the American soldiers and want to talk with them and to ask for camels. As someone shoots their shot their own camels, and they and that scene was intense for damn sure. They arrive at a place while they're sleeping hole. They use sleeping holes as bed sets. While Sykes asks Swafford to come with him about Troy having a criminal record and lied to the Marines about it at, on his application, and is out of the war for that reason when it's all over, as he learns his girlfriend dumped him. And at night, Swafford gives Troy his Jarhead brand as he earned it, and he goes back home, which is a little tedious. The war begins without Swafford shooting anything, and the soldiers move on as I like the first half of this movie more than the second half, because it dies down as far as my opinion is concerned. Some planes come in and attack like they were Iraqis, which was fucking random while they stopped to search for enemies at a deserted part of the desert where there's burned cars which they see nothing while they approach some burned oil ground areas which made me a tad nervous for the soldiers and that is a good thing for us the second half of this movie i'll give they dig for sleeping holes while swafford sees a horse and I get the impression he's seeing things, and Sykes talks with Swafford about his brother and how much he loves his job compared to his brother and his life, which felt a little shameful. But with the line being said by Jamie Foxx, it works, it's working pretty good. As the soldiers take off and Krasinski off orders Swafford and Troy, Troy excuse me, to stay on one side of the mountains, and Major Lincoln tells them to not take a shot while Troy wants to take the shot, but Lincoln tells him no, while the other soldiers take off on the other side of, of the mountain without Swafford and Troy, as they stay put by orders, and they learn they won the war with Fight the Power playing in the background. As Swafford says, he never once shot a thing during the war, but shoots at the sky along with the other soldiers, and they get back home, and the soldiers are off doing their own thing, while Swafford talks with his now ex-girlfriend, and we don't know what they say, which is for the best, and Fergie goes to Swafford's house and goes to Troy's funeral, and the movie ends with Swafford looking outside like he was in Iraq, and the climax was, well, as this entire second half was, wasn't as good as the first half of the movie, which felt a little disappointing in my opinion. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 6.5 out of 10. I do like how director Sam Mendes tells the audience that war is hell, and I do like these characters as they're hell of a lot of fun to be around with. The writing is good and funny, and it is hilarious at times to listen to, as the script is hilarious at times, and you feel the drama around them maybe at some points. The beginning of the movie was a hell of a lot more fun than the second half, but the second half dies down as far as my opinion is concerned. So I'm recommending it as it's a good movie, not a great movie. I'll just say that much. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me. And next time I will be back with Revolutionary Road. And until then, hoorah.